Hi, this is Professor Evans. This video is for EET 1214C, and in this video, I am going to go over the introduction to building an AC circuit, or Lab 6. So I'm gonna start by placing a two kilo ohm resistor in series with a one kilo ohm resistor on the breadboard. Remember, these are in series. So they are going to share a node or a connection on their breadboard. So I have my 2 kilo ohm in series with my 1 kilo ohm, which is just going to ground. Now we're going to add an AC source to this circuit. To do that, I'm going to need to use the function generator, which is right here on my bench. The function generator has a couple of options. You have two output ports. The one on the left is for digital devices, like when we built circuits out of AND or a NOT gates. If you wanted to have a square wave function or a clock signal for a digital circuit, you're gonna use the output on the left. If you're building a circuit like we are today, an AC circuit, you're going to use the port on the right. So you're going to make sure that you connect to the port on the right if you're building an AC circuit like we are today. You're going to need a function generator cable to connect to the function generator. It's a cable that has a connector like this on one end, and on the other end it is split between a red and black wire. The red is short, the black is long. This is what your function generator cable looks like on the other end. So you're going to take the cable and connect it to the function generator by pushing and then turning to secure it onto the function generator. The red is like your power, and the black is like your ground. So we're gonna connect our function generator to our circuit. By connecting the red, where current is supposed to go in, and black, where current is supposed to exit. So I have the function generator connected, and now I'm going to turn it on by pressing the power button in the middle and you'll notice that you have a frequency display here. You can change the frequency by turning this knob. You can change the range of the frequency by hitting these arrows. Notice that this unit will change and the decimal point moves to the right every time I hit the button on the left. If I wanna make it bigger, I hit the button on the right. The decimal point is moving and the units are getting larger. So for example, if I go to the left, I have 270 hertz. If I go to the right, now I have 2,765 hertz. If I go to the right again, now I have 27.47 kilohertz. So watch the unit as it changes. And that is how we manipulate the frequency. So this knob can go up or down after you get it within the range that you want. Next you'll notice over here is the function. The function determines what kind of wave you're gonna get out sine wave, sawtooth wave, a, a square wave, or a pulse wave. We want a sine wave, so hit this button until you get the green light to illuminate over the sine wave. The next thing we're going to do is use the oscilloscope to measure the um, AC voltage that is currently coming out of the function generator. Right now we have it turned on, we have it delivering a sine wave, but we can't really see what's happening. So in order to do that, we're gonna use the oscilloscope. Um, one thing that we're gonna finish doing before using the oscilloscope is setting the frequency. So this should be at 700 hertz. If you notice that you're turning the knob and it just won't change any further, that means you have to increase the range. So now I've gone from 575 hertz to 5,892 hertz, and then I have to go back down to the level that I want. So I'm gonna keep turning. So we get to 700 hertz. So I have the frequency set, I have the sine wave set. What I don't have is my peak voltage set. In order to do, to do that, I have to use the oscilloscope to see what's going on with the AC voltage. So I'm gonna turn this on by pressing the button on the top left. It's up here, it's kind of above the regal sign on the back. You push that button to turn it on. And in order to see what's going on, you're gonna need an oscilloscope probe. The oscilloscope probe looks like this. So you're gonna get one of those and connect it to 
channel one of your oscilloscope. So notice that you'll have two channels to connect to. We're going to connect to channel one. Notice that I had the LA button highlighted and there were some lines on the screen when I turned this on. If that happens to you, just hit the LA button until it turns off. Now we're going to take our scope probe and we're going to connect it to the left side of R1. This is so that we can measure the input voltage coming into R1. I'm also going to take a wire and ground this little black alligator clip hanging out of the probe. So your probe has to connect to any point on the circuit and then be grounded. Now this probe can take measurements and show us what's going on at that particular point in the circuit. I'm gonna turn channel one on. Right now channel one is off. If I hit this button to turn channel one on, channel one becomes green and I get a wave on the screen. So I um, hit this button to turn channel one on. This here is just a menu. You can hit this white button right there to turn the menu on or off. Menu on, menu off. At the bottom, you can see a measurement for your scale. Channel one is at two volts per division. So as we go vertically up and down this uh, Y axis, the voltage is going to change by two volts per division. We can see the time here is five milliseconds per division. So now that I'm just focusing on the scope for a little bit, I'm gonna zoom in just to the oscilloscope so that you can have a better view. Once again, you can see the volts per division for channel one and the amount of time per division for the X axis. Now, in order to manipulate the position of the sine wave, we have a vertical and a horizontal section. Position, we'll move it up or down. The scale will change the vertical scale. So notice if I turn the scale to the right, my voltage per division measurement is getting smaller and the wave stretches. If I turn this to the left, my voltage per division gets larger and my wave shrinks. So that's the vertical position. So I can move this up or down and then I can stretch it out or compress it. With the horizontal position, I can do the same thing horizontally. So I can stretch it out horizontally. Notice that as I change the scale, at the bottom, my time base also changes. So I know how many seconds or milliseconds per division as I change the scale. So in general, what we wanna do is get a nice clear picture of that sine wave by manipulating our scales. So this is the voltage wave that's going into our circuit right now. The voltage is increasing and decreasing in the shape of this sinusoidal wave. Next, we can use the measure button to measure certain elements of voltage or time. Notice that the source says channel one. I can change that to channel two if I'm using channel two. Right now, nothing's connected to channel two. So I'm just gonna make sure that that says channel one. Now, if you hit the button right next to voltage, you can scroll down and you can have any of these voltages added to the screen. It'll measure it for you. So for example, if I want to measure peak to peak voltage, I'm going to make sure that I'm hovering over it and then press that button into the oscilloscope and you'll get a measurement right there. I can go back and add my RMS voltage. I can also go to the time menu and add period or frequency. So I'm going to add frequency. So I can see that although my function generator is set at exactly 700 hertz, this is bouncing between 694 and 794. Now if you look at the lab in your manual, this specific circuit is supposed to have a peak to peak voltage of 5 volts. Peak to peak voltage of 5 volts. Right now, 
the peak to peak voltage is measured as 2.2 volts. So let's talk about how we're gonna change that. In order to change that, I'm gonna zoom back out. And we're gonna look at the function generator. So we have some knobs here that allow us to manipulate the amplitude of our sine wave. So notice as I change this wave, the wave gets taller and VPP gets bigger. So what we wanna do is increase this until we get to a VPP of five volts. Now you'll see right here that all of my measurements just went away. That's because the wave is too big for the screen. We need to resize. So if I resize the window, my measurements come back. So my goal is to manipulate the amplitude button until I get as close as I can to exactly five volts peak to peak. You're gonna try to get as close as you can. It won't be perfect. So now using that amplitude, I've got my VPP set to 5.08 volts. Now my circuit has been set up according to the picture in lab six. I have a peak to peak voltage of five volts at 700 Hertz. I have my two resistors in series. So this is all a part of the setup for an AC circuit. You have to set your function generator, set your frequency, set up the oscilloscope, and then use the oscilloscope to actually measure the peak to peak voltage that's coming out. Now that we have the peak to peak voltage set up properly, we can use our second probe to measure some information about R2. So I'm gonna get another oscilloscope probe and add that to channel two. I'm gonna clip the probe onto the top of R2. Right here. And then I'm gonna ground the alligator clip as well. So now I have channel one connected to R1, channel two is connected to R2. Now we can zoom back into the oscilloscope and talk about how we get measurements. So let's turn channel two on by pressing the channel two button. The channel that is highlighted down here is the channel that you currently have control of with your vertical and horizontal positions. So channel two is highlighted, which means if I change this knob, channel two is the one that's gonna move. And if I move this knob, channel two is the one that's gonna respond. Okay, so whatever is highlighted. If I wanna go back and move channel one, I need to hit the channel one button to highlight channel one, and then I can move channel one. Now you'll notice that there's a scale for channel one and a scale for channel two. We wanna make sure that these scales are the same. For example, if I go to channel two, if I highlight channel two and I change the scale like that, channel one looks significantly bigger than channel two if we're just looking at the picture without using the scale as a reference. It can be misleading. We always wanna check our scale, but in general, Let's use the same scale with both channels so that we have an accurate relative picture of one wave to the other. So I can see that the yellow wave is our input voltage and the blue wave is our voltage across R2. If I go back to measure, I can then I can now change the source to channel two and I can measure VPP for channel two. But when you add that to the screen, notice that what was here shifted off. You only get three measurements on the screen at a time. As you add new measurements, old ones will shift away. Notice that my voltages for channel one are in yellow. Voltage for channel two is in blue. But I can measure any value I want between channel one and channel two by just hitting the measure window and then selecting my source, channel one or channel two, and then going to the measurement that I'd like to see. So for example, I'm gonna add my RMS voltage for channel two. So let's say that I want to clear out all my measurements. I can do that. 
I can also hit the display all button and get a table of all the measurement values at one time. And then I can look for the value that I'm trying to find. I can change this to source channel one and it'll turn yellow and now I have all the same values for channel one as well. So this is how we can take measurements using the scope, using the measure button. When you're done with this, you can turn it off.